Always glad to have you here, but always a little more glad when it's on a Friday. This one's on the 20th. Thank you for spending a little time with us this evening, wrapping up this week's worth of programming the week before Thanksgiving. And of course, I've got a much better handle, as good as one can have, on your Thanksgiving forecast the Friday before. We'll go into that. We'll also hear from local officials pleading, literally pleading, with everyone in McGoffin County and Sagersville to exercise common sense and a lot of other words that they chose to use in regards to the holidays and just for the next several weeks in regards to wearing the masks, social distancing, and the like. They also have data, as we've seen for days and weeks now, continue to support just that movement, if you will. We will have an update Four deaths, by the way, in Johnson County just this week related to COVID. I'll have all of that in just a few moments. I'll have coverage of this week's fiscal court meeting. We have uh, several other reports from around the area where we'll begin this evening, actually, with a fatal accident that took place in Johnson County last evening, claiming the life of a Johnson County man. Local EMS and Rescue, the Rock House Fire Department, which captured this still image this evening, responded to a single vehicle crash yesterday afternoon in which a 53-year-old man from Denver was pronounced dead by the Johnson County coroner. Only little information about the accident itself as of airtime. I do know that, as I said, local EMS, fire, and law enforcement responded to this fatal single vehicle accident, the Rock House Fire and Rescue Department capturing that photograph there, where they had to literally cut the roof of the vehicle to try to extricate Mr. Haney from his passenger car. He was identified thereafter as 53-year-old Daryl Keith Haney of Johnson County. We know that he was pronounced dead by the Johnson County coroner after being removed from his vehicle. The accident is still under investigation by local authorities as to what may have caused him to lose the roadway and his vehicle overturned. We also know that Haney is survived by a son, Christopher Keith Haney of Denver, and a private memorial service is to be held in his honor for immediate family this coming Monday. Arrangements being made at the Phelps and Son Funeral Home. In an update, not much to update you on, but just to kind of keep you in the loop as I think uh, everyone, whether you travel at once in a great while or every day awaiting the reopening of 460 West to West Liberty, Kentucky Highway District 10, uh, sharing some photos with us today that does indicate that indeed it is going to take them weeks from now to repair and replace a culvert near West Liberty. Of course, everyone just now uh, being able to access the Robin Holbrook Memorial Bridge there at White Oak and get past that point, but still having to take a detour essentially on if you're going out of Sagersville, getting on the parkway or getting on Route 30 on 460 and traveling down the parkway and getting on 205 because of another closure for this reason. Excavation work ongoing for the drainage structure replacement on US 460 east of West Liberty, just outside of West Liberty in Morgan County, to replace the failing WPA era culvert. So you're still going to have to take the detour just to give you an update tonight on for how long. Their estimate is that with work beginning day before yesterday, they do believe that it's going to take about three weeks to finish this project, a project which is being done by contractors which obtained the bid and state employees and workers and equipment as well. So an estimated three weeks from today before you will finally be able to take the short way, (laughs) the shortest way, between here and West Liberty and get there in one way or the other. And I'll keep you up to date. Maybe they'll get a little ahead of schedule. We'll see. In other news, some things are just hard to imagine at times. Hard to imagine that $3 million went by until it was noticed that it had gone by. A man from Pike County who runs several addiction treatment facilities or clinics, not just in Pike but also in Floyd and at least Harlan counties, has been indicted on federal charges of health care fraud and wire fraud totaling, yes, over $3 million. The clinics, ASAP Addiction Treatment and Renew Addiction Treatment and Renew Residential Treatment Services, all involved 
in a scam in which the federal government alleges that he required many, if not most, of his Medicaid patients being treated to pay some two to three hundred dollars monthly in cash, and then at the same time he was billing Medicaid for the services that they were paying cash for. The indictment also says that when the patients asked about the cash payments, some thinking there may be something unusual, they were told that the cash they were paying was for items or services that were not covered by Medicaid, which actually were. And the federal government says that between 2016 and last year, he collected over $3 million in cash from those patients. $3 million. Eugene Sisko III of Pikeville, facing charges that could send him to prison for anywhere up to 20 years in prison for health care fraud and wire fraud, and he could have to pay restitution of up to 5 to $6 million as well. When I come back, we'll go to McGoffin County Fiscal Court meeting coverage and pull a couple of segments out of that meeting, one dealing with trying to save some money utility bills on the McGoffin County Justice Center, as we have seen school systems by and large do in the viewing area and across the state and country over the past several years with new technology in regards to uh, lighting, heating and cooling, and the like. They've been able to go in, retrofit, and save some money. And the money that could be saved here at the Justice Center is per year is pretty staggering. We'll talk about that and Judge Executive Matt Weirman pleads to the public to try to control the coronavirus, especially going into the holidays. I'll have that next. I'm Dr. Jason Zimmerman at Highlands ARH, the healthcare system of Appalachia. The votes are in and it's unanimous. The Homestyle Bowl is back for a limited time at your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipes. Savory chicken strips, kernel corn, cheddar cheese, our famous gravy, all on a bed of beautiful mashed potatoes. It's a meal or a side and it's for a limited time at your Sagersville Lee's. Conley Tire in Staffordsville or ConleyTire.net right now and get 200 bucks back on a new set of Goodyears, 100 bucks on new Generals, Coopers, Bridgestones, and Mickey Thompsons, all with the smoothest balancing Snap-on has to offer. And if your ride has a light on, let their state-of-the-art Zeus diagnostic machine figure it out for only $35 at Conley Tire. Same six decades of experience, same undivided dedication and focus on winning your case. New location. The law offices of McFarland and Tinker are now located on Route 114 in the former McGoffin Farm Bureau location. Motor vehicle accidents, Social Security disability, SSI claims, wrongful death and workers' compensation and work injury cases. Call 349-9000. McFarland and Tinker. McGoffin County Judge Executive Matt Wireman spoke to the fiscal court about an analysis that he had requested to be done of the McGoffin County Justice Center in regards to saving some money on utilities. And indeed, there is money to be saved, over $50,000 a year currently being wasted according to that analysis. The Justice Center literally using as much electricity and utilities as the McGoffin County High School, which has hundreds of students in it on a normal basis at least. They actually budget almost $120,000, $119,500 a year currently for utilities, just utilities for the McGoffin County Justice Center. And after this, is an, after this analysis has been done, he was asking the court to approve for firms to come in and assess and submit their proposals on how they can save the county some big bucks. They went through and done some studies and they, they, they've identified about 60,000 plus in savings that we could, we could have over there with new equipment. That building was built in the early 2000s. Uh, the lifespan of HVAC systems generally run around 20 years. And, and what this does is, is ask for proposals from companies that do um, uh, energy management, cert performance service contracts. And they'll come in and they'll do their own studies and they'll say if you put this here this here this here you'll save x dollars now that savings is then turned around and put toward a bond issue to pay for all that equipment so because right now it's either we say we pay 
sixty thousand more to the power company. We got all the equipment, and it breaks down, and then we're citizens, and the workers don't have that climatized environment. Or we could put new equipment in there, save that sixty thousand, put that toward uh, making the bond payments. And this is something that's done in I think there's four judicial centers now doing it uh, in, the, in the state. Uh, all kinds of school districts do this, and a lot of county government buildings. There's an efficiency scale, if you will, that is used, and 181 is said to be the most efficient. They rank the McGoffa County Justice Center at about a 40. They believe, with improvements, they can get it up to as high as an 80. In closing the meeting, Judge Wireman pleading with the public and all of our viewers to please wear your masks, social distance, and keep travel and gatherings to a minimum over the holidays to try to help save the health and lives of McGoffin Countyans. We are a red county. We know that we've got a lot of cases and they're continuing to escalate. And, and I just want to encourage everybody, if you're watching this, wear the mask. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that is a simple thing to do. Uh, this ain't about civil liberties and, and your rights. This is about the lives of, of every one of us sitting in here and everybody watching, everybody that, that's out there whether it's in McGoffin County or whether it's in California. Uh, that's a simple thing to do. And, and I read somewhere that the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is to not care about someone else and only care about yourself yeah. and being self-centered. And we gotta love each other and take care of each other and quit being selfish and run around and just being rebellious uh, that, that to me is, uh, I, I don't understand that, that line of thinking. Uh, I've got family members that are old. I've got some of those conditions myself that uh, if I get it, it might take me out. Uh, I don't want my family, your family, I don't want anybody to get this and it take them out. And how somebody could be so self-centered and selfish to willingly and, 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 and blatantly not wear it and do that that kind of thing. I just I don't get it. I just don't get it. So I'm pleading with everybody, just wear the mask. It's a simple thing to do. Yeah, it's inconvenient. It gives me a headache half the time. That's why I, actually it saves me money because I go in the store and I don't stay in there long because one is not safe and two I don't I don't like wearing it. But I do. And I would encourage everybody else to do it. Those pleas by wiremen are supported again by our local COVID update for tonight. I'll have that in a few moments right now, though. Let's find out what's happening. Birthdays are happening, I can tell you, on tonight's McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. We'll begin with, with a lot of love from his mom and a lot of his family. Birthday wishes going out to Officer Mike Nichols of the Sagersville Police Department. Happy, happy birthday, Mike. Happy, happy birthday from your mom and the family. And an early birthday, he'll be 20, 20 on the 21st tomorrow. Garen Howard turning the 23rd 20th tomorrow 20th. with heaven. A lot of love and best wishes from all your wonderful family and dad and mom. Happy, happy birthday, Garen. Happy 20th tomorrow to you. A couple of quick reminders in lieu of the holiday next week, Thanksgiving, the Water into Wine Food Pantry at the Lakefront Church of God will be closed next week from Monday uh, 23rd through the 27th. Keep that in mind. Also keep in mind, though, this coming Monday is the next McGoffin County Community Blood Drive. The level is critical. They need donors to save lives, and as an extra incentive, everyone who donates, your blood will be tested for COVID-19 antibodies. They'll be at the Sagittal First Baptist Church 1 to 5 on Monday. And I think that's all I've got for the calendar tonight. I'm pretty sure. Yep. So I'll wrap it up as I most often do, almost always. When you've got calendar announcements, birthdays, and anniversaries, they're all free. This is how you get them on the show. And if you want birthdays, birth announcements, or anniversaries printed in the Sagersville Independent, well, that link is at the very bottom of your screen where you can contact my office manager, Joe, Miss Joe Harvey, J-O, at SagersvilleIndependence.com. Funeral services tonight brought to you nightly by the McGoffa County Funeral Home include those which have been announced for 65-year-old Carl Edward Collins of Rock House Road, who passed away on yesterday's date. The son of the late Oscar and Yeardley Conley Collins, he survived by his wife, Sherry, 
sons Ricky Dean Conley, Eddie Sean Collins, Glenn Travis Collins, and four brothers, James Oscar, Jerry Lynn, David, and Mikey Collins, all of Sagersville, as well as two sisters, Jeanette Collins Holiday and Judy Kane Reed, who has nine grandkids. Funeral services are going to be held this coming Monday morning at 1130 from the New Life Worship Center. Burial will follow in the Lakeview Memorial Gardens in Staffordsville. Friends can visit the church after 6 o'clock Saturday and all day Sunday and prior to funeral services. Go with All Pro and you'll always get a perfectly finished project backed by decades of experience and thousands of satisfied customers. Always with the best prices on everything from small to large remodels, bathrooms to kitchens to entire homes, or turnkey new construction on everything from garages, homes to retail space. And seamless gutters too. And All Pro still offers 0% financing for up to 18 months and long-term low interest rates on those big projects. For an estimate, call this family-owned business today. Hello, this is Bob Hutchison for Hutch Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. You know the old saying, when the going gets tough, the tough drive a Ram truck or a Jeep. Okay, so it's a new saying, but it's true. Right now, you can get employee pricing on most Jeeps. Get 0.9% financing for 84 months on the Tough Ram truck. Remember, with our credit rebuilding program, we can put you in a car or truck today. Nearly everything today is about being safe and well, and Parkway Pharmacy has two great ways to get your prescriptions quickly, safely, and conveniently. Simply pull up curbside and call and let them know you're there or circle around the building and drive through. And just in, a fresh inventory of Atalo, premium CBD oil and cream products for managing pain, anxiety, depression, rest, digestion, and more. All at Parkway Pharmacy in Salyersville. Here's what's happening COVID-19 wise locally and in the surrounding area. As to no surprise, I don't think it was announced today by the McGuffin County School System that they will remain closed to in-person classes until January the 4th, as was recommended by the governor, mandated by the governor essentially as of yesterday. They say that they will continue to announce any plans of return to in-person classes when they are being made. <coughs> Excuse me, they also say that they have no plans on bringing back any elementary students on the week of December the 7th or close to as would be allowed by the state if we were to be in the orange zone, but essentially all classes staying out until January the 4th in McGoffin County. And remember, uh, virtual classes will not be taking place next week, the week of Thanksgiving, and no lunch deliveries next week either to give bus drivers and cooks, I'm sure, a much-needed week off after a lot of hard work they have been doing since this pandemic began, in addition to what they normally do on a daily basis. <coughs> <clears throat> My apologies again. Sagersville City Hall will be closed next week, partly due to the Thanksgiving holiday, but also the rest due to the increase in COVID-19 cases here locally. From Morgan County, a recent surge there as well. They are closing their Morgan County office building to the public for in-person beginning next week, all of next week beginning Monday. So keep that in mind, another office building closure in lieu of, of the holiday, but also as well as the high number of COVID-19 cases. Over in Floyd County, I don't have the numbers for today, but 39 cases reported just yesterday in Floyd County of the coronavirus. They're almost a hit 1,000, 984 total cases, 350 still active. They have 10 people hospitalized. Most of their new daily cases indeed are symptomatic. We are seeing the majority, or at least many more cases being symptomatic in the area at this time. Out of an abundance of caution, the Floyd County Health Department also says that if you shopped in Just Save in Prestonsburg Monday through Wednesday, there was an employee that has tested positive there. You need to monitor yourself for symptoms. In the neighboring Johnson County, 12 new cases today, one of their lowest days this week, but brings their total to 732 cases, 182 active, nine people hospitalized. They had another death to report yesterday. That's eight deaths in Johnson County so far to date. Four deaths in just the past seven days in Johnson County. I don't have their numbers for today. I do have McGoffin County's numbers for today. If it's like yesterday, they're going to be added to in the midst of this show or shortly thereafter. 
but as it stands at this hour, per our public health director, Mayor Pete Shepard, we already broke our highest weekly number of cases yesterday with one more day to go as I tabulate from Saturday through Friday. By the end of yesterday, we had 17, or 75 total cases for the week. Shepard says we had well more than a dozen to that today. Many cases coming from one church service related to from this past Sunday, one of three churches which were included in blanket statements of precaution issued yesterday by the Magoffa County Health Department, which means we now have, at this hour, at least 90 cases for one week here in Magoffa County. 75 as of last evening. How many are you going to add to that tonight? We're going to add 15 to that total. So we'll have a grand total of 90 as of, as of right now. And give me some particulars on these latest 15. I know a significant portion of the past couple of days is going to be related to at least one church service that you spoke well, of yesterday. Yes, we had five yesterday from the Half Mountain Church. We got six more positives today from that church. Uh, we've got two new ones for the nursing home residents, and we got two employees at the nursing home that uh, tested positive today. And then we've got five other positive tests from. Uh, I think one or two of them is from uh, Line Apparel and then just uh, other family groups that's uh, been tested positive. Going back to the church services, I, you spoke of them in some detail yesterday. Is that is that all related to just the, the positive from this past? I know there were three churches that you uh, issued blanket statements about, and Half Mountain was one of them. Are all those now 11 or how many cases, 12, 13, I guess, in totality, related to just this past Sunday when they met? Yeah, this the, all the all these eleven that we reported so far positive is from uh, Half Mountain Church. Uh, the other two churches we haven't got any more any positives from that the contact in those churches yet. And interested, so you've got you've had to contact all these eleven people. I'd be interested to know if, if they're wearing masks or not. Uh, the ones we contacted said they did not did not wear a mask. The positive ones that we we've, we've talked to. So that leaves us with two more residents and two more staff. By my math, puts us at 71 total residents for the Sizer Nursing and Rehabilitation Center and 21 of our staff. Does that sound right? Yes, that's, that's the numbers. And if, I, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they have 101 current residents, so that's nearing the entire population. Uh, yes. Um, lastly, I guess, is there any good news as far as those who've been hospitalized? I know we had one in the vent yesterday. We had several in the hospital, and uh, you know it's a daily it's a daily occurrence where we're finding out of friends or relatives or relatives of friends or vice versa who got people loved ones in the hospital, which are getting overcrowded and starting to turn people away in parts of eastern Kentucky. What what's our status? Uh, well, two got released today, which is good news. We still have one on the vent, but we still have five in the hospital. Um, uh, so. Uh, so that, that was good news that two got to come home. Do you want to mention anything now about the upcoming holidays, or do you want to do that when we when we talk Monday? Uh, I'd like to mention something about church services this weekend. Oh, please, go ahead. And we'll do, do the that next week. Uh, as the governor's recommended, he's at, re asking all churches this weekend and hopefully the next couple, three weeks, to go virtual if they will. Uh, that seemed to work out real well back when we first started quarantining and asking people to do masks and uh, I think with the way things are going right now with the spiking of all these cases that if we don't do something like that then McGoffin County is just going to continue to increase uh, with their numbers and we're going to have more people hospitalized and we'll probably have more deaths so I'm asking everyone that this weekend and, and through the holidays to stay as home as much as possible and the churches to, to go virtually if they will and uh, to go back to kind of when we had everything shut down. I think that's the only way we're going to really curtail this thing right now and, and maybe just put a halt to it or and hopefully get it decreasing. Yeah, at this point, I just don't know that we're going to put a stop to it. Or, and I like your optimism uh, in decreasing, but holding it where it is right now is going to be a feat in and of its own, I think. That's exactly right. We, you know, if we, it, it's, it's, well, you can see how our numbers went up every day, I mean, and for the last two weeks. and. And they're not saying that we're going to have anything that's going to get any better anytime soon. So I, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I'd hope the people in McGoffin County will do the smart thing, the right thing, wear their mask. I still see too many people not wearing masks. And I know we haven't really had any cases that got contacted with, you know, cases inside stores where they're not wearing masks, where the employees are wearing masks, but we're just, 
uh, the general population comes in and out. We really haven't had no cases from that, but it, it's going to happen, and it's going and it's going to happen probably within the next few days. Still, much more to come before I leave you for the weekend. I'll be right back in just a few seconds. We know that life cannot come to a complete standstill because of the pandemic, but we can make sure that you can continue to bank safely and securely by calling either branch of the Sagersville National Bank to schedule any in-lobby services or by using either of our drive throughs Mondays through Fridays, the main drive through is open from 8 until 3, and the branch drive through is open from 8 until 5, and the branch drive through is also open on weekends, Saturdays 8 until noon with ATMs available 24-7 at both locations. Or by taking advantage of our completely free 24-hour internet banking and bill pay, banking by phone, remote deposit, automatic payment services, and more. Sagersville National Bank, always making your banking easier and safer. Hello, this is Bob Hutchison for Hutch Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. You know the old saying, when the going gets tough, the tough drive a Ram truck or a Jeep. Okay, so it's a new saying, but it's true. Get 0.9% financing for 72 months on Jeep Renegades and 0.9% for 84 months on the Tough Ram truck. Remember, with our credit rebuilding program, we can put you in a car or truck today. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And to make it even better, the AppWire Holiday Sale starts now with great deals on select Samsung devices. The best devices like the Note 20 Ultra and Galaxy S20 Ultra are up to $400 off all month long while supplies last or pay even less with a great device like the Galaxy S20 and save over $10 a month off the normal price on the Appalachian Advantage. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. There is never a good time for a breakdown. They will happen, and your car at some point is going to need some repairs and maintenance, and Black Smoke Performance is open and here with professional, fast, safe service. And they now have certified full air conditioning, diagnostics, and repair to keep you cool in whatever you drive. Black Smoke Performance, 349-8785. Now for your state COVID update, the governor issuing, not via his normal press conference, but as he does on Fridays, a press release to all media, which again sets another record for Kentucky. First, you're looking at today's incident rate map, and then there were seven, a mere seven Kentucky counties not in the red, still hanging on to an orange status, and if the past few weeks, several days, is any indicator, they will be gone by this time or by the end of next week or maybe even soon thereafter, if not beforehand. Many of them close, as you can see, in their 20s, already close to that 25 critical zone level. The governor announced 3,825 new cases today. That's the most ever announced in one day. It's almost 4,000 new deaths, 20 today. One of those, a 77-year-old woman from Johnson County. We believe that one of the four deaths they had just this week. Johnson County's already lost eight. McGoffin County still has a confirmed six deaths. I believe that number to be higher. We're watching, and I'll report to that to you whenever we are able to confirm it, that indeed we have lost more McGoffin Countyans as a result. The governor's saying that, please remember your decisions are going to be what determines how many people live or die. Do your part. Currently in the ICU, 366, currently on a ventilator, almost 200 at 188 in Kentucky. And as you can imagine, the positivity rate still above 9% at 9.1. So with that, let's go on and put the last item of business before us, and that's your Licking Valley RECC outlook. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's over for now. The 60s and the sunshine are <laughs> all but a thought and a brief memory. They're gone. We've got a front coming, and it's going to change things, and we're already seeing clouds on the increase and mostly cloudy skies tonight. And later on, 2 or 3 in the morning, about a 20% chance of showers as a result, and that 20% chance will hang on through your Saturday as well. So 46 for nighttime lows, light winds out of the southwest, mostly cloudy skies, shower chances into your Saturday are at 20, as I said, 
And the sun takes a break. Well, it's just going to be hid very well from the cloudy skies. Mostly cloudy, 59 and 44 for your Saturday. And like I said, a 20% chance of showers pretty much throughout much of your Saturday afternoon and evening. Showers likely as this front uh, gets even closer on your Sunday. Temperatures hitting right around 60 on Sunday, mostly cloudy. Showers likely. Winds as well will be noticeable southwest up to 18 miles per hour. Monday, as you saw, mostly sunny and 50 as that setup and system is gone, leaving behind a cool, albeit sunny day on Monday at 50. And there's the rest of your week. Thanksgiving week looking at you. Tuesday, 58, still mostly sunny and clear. But by Tuesday night, to preface Thanksgiving, Another front rolls through, and with it, more clouds and showers than not. 61, mostly cloudy. Showers likely on your Wednesday. Right now for your Thanksgiving Day forecast, 59, mostly cloudy. A 30% chance of showers. Similar situation for your Friday of next week as well. And that's going to wrap it up for this evening and for this week, of course, as well. I hope you have a safe weekend above all else, and that you see me back here tomorrow night, excuse me, Monday night for more of your news today. A short week heading into Thanksgiving. Hopefully we'll we'll have some good news to share. Good night. Thanks for watching.